Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my good friend here, fellow creative actor, Chave Lorenzo. How are you, buddy? How's everything? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, brother? I'm great, man. It's been a while since we spoke. We always been keeping in touch through social media, like I do with a lot of friends and colleagues and things like that. Um, but we actually, to give you guys some background, uh, used to work at a place called Sunglass Hut. <laughs> and uh, not to throw you, not to put you on the spot there, but uh, do you miss it from time to time, or it's kind of in the past? You know what I miss, I'm, I think I miss the uh, the camaraderie of just meeting people like yourself uh, um, in the most unusual kind of spaces. You know, who would have thought that, you know, us working at Sunglass Hut would sort of bring us here today? Of course. You know, so kind of those moments are, are, are missed, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than that, yeah. No, me, me and you both, uh, I, I think we can agree we don't miss the retail aspect. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> some customers, we love you, but some customers, please uh, <laughs> just do some online you're shopping. Pull, yeah, you're going to make me pull my hair out. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's always great. I, I'm glad you said that. It's always great to, you know, connect with people. And who would have thought we would be connecting uh, as creatives, right? Um, I remember when our, like, people, our managers would tell us, did you know Chevet was in film as well? Because I would always talk about film and they're like, yeah, you should connect and vice versa with yourself. And that's kind of the first thing I wanted to bring up with you is ever since we have uh, kind of met, we've always been talking about our passion for movies and I've seen it uh, expressed uh, through your Instagram and the come up, like how far you've gone. Um, and I just wanted to know, uh, cause I'm always curious about fellow creatives. What made you, what made you draw into acting? Like what made you, uh, go, go that direction? I think there's a, a series of things. And, you know, for me, one of the, the main reasons was I was always super interested in what was behind, uh, you know, what was happening behind these films that we watched, these, these TV shows, right. you know, things that were on TV. I wanted to know how it worked. I was so fascinated in, you know, just finding out, you know, how, you know, how people are so creative. And, you know, the thing is, the thing that's funny is as you become an actor and as you learn a lot of things, you learn that there are so many people um, that, that it takes to create, to create films and TV and anything in terms of, uh, you know, filmmaking. And I was always super passionate about watching TV shows and films and how it made me feel. And I identified with a lot of actors and how they made me feel and the right. stories that they told. Um, it triggered something for me. And it triggered, you know, maybe it was something deep down where it triggered a certain emotion where I was like, wow, I can really feel that I'm watching this. Right. And I think I became addicted to that. I wanted to find out how can I do that? And, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of aligning moments that um, that sort of brought us to to this place, and you know it's from inspirations and you know just taking a leap of faith and um, wanting to do something that I was passionate about. That's um, great, man. You mentioned uh, there are certain actors that really pulled you into the art form uh, and inspired you, and I'm always. For me, uh, I always used to tell you about Tarantino or Scorsese, yes. right? And I, if you listen to my podcast, guys, get used to it. I always bring them up uh, because they're huge inspirations. What particular actors um, got you uh, got you interested in this uh, sort of game? It, uh, it it's funny you ask that because it changes every day. But right. primarily, the actors that um, really drive it for me are like Will Smith, Denzel's, the Leos of, of the world. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and um, as I got into acting, uh, there's other actors that I started to develop, uh, you know, and understanding their craft, like Mahershala Ali or Daniel Kaluuya. Um, there's, there's such a, a long list of, of those people and I enjoy their craft and sort of all the aspects and sort of the individuality of each actor and what they bring. Mm -hmm. You know, each actor sort of brings their own thing to the screen. Yes. You know, we think about, we think about Denzel. Denzel's like the big, you know, the big, Hollywood blockbuster guy, you know, he's been doing this for so many decades, you know, he's like box office man, same thing with Will Smith, right, and being sort of, um, you know, transcending in terms of, you know, coming into Hollywood as he converts from being a rapper, and then into a TV, and then going into a TV show, right, mm -hmm. and then going into films, and then sort of developing from there, and then we have somebody like Leo, who is, um, you know, I consider him almost like the character actor, where he's able to just sort of dive into all these different roles and 
you know, just just be a chameleon, you know, and yeah. and moving forward to you know people like Mahershala Ali and Daniel Kaluuya, the story, how they got into to acting and how they got their big moment, you know, those things are what really um, inspire me. They uh, they drive me to to want to learn more and to understand the art of acting and filmmaking, you know, every day. And you know, it, it's kind of just like each little small thing from each person. I just pull from it. I just pull from it each time. Right, right. You know, it's so, not like one central yeah. figure. It's um, you take inspiration from anything. And I, I admire a lot of things you're saying because it's kind of like how I look at filmmaking, I guess, from a writer director uh, perspective is there's so many things you can learn from. And when they produce movies, um, you see it from a different perspective, you know, um, regarding what you said about Denzel or uh, Leo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio depending on the film you're watching, um, that a performance, the way they express that emotion um, and they dive into the character. Like you said, the best performances are when you don't even uh, refer them by their actor's name. You're just like, mm -hmm. wow, that's the character, right? I, I come to mind like Heath Ledger and the Joker. Heath Ledger, um, exactly. Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight, right? And, um, you know, Django Unchained, I was, uh, you know, a big fan of Tarantino. Again, Django Unchained is a, a film that kind of brought me into his universe. And I remember seeing DiCaprio's performance as Calvin mm -hmm. Candy, and he, you know, played this racist person that you wanted, you wanted him to die. However, yeah. that performance was so um, enthralling. Like it was just like he he sold you on that character. And I was kind of skeptical because up until that point, he played only the hero, the leading guy. You know, exactly. everyone liked him, likable, right? And the only controversial work uh, role that I comes to mind is really the, the Departed. Um, up mm -hmm. until that point with Scorsese, right? Because he was kind of like here and there, but at the end of the day, he was a hero. Um, so yeah, uh, Denzel, another one, right? Training Day, yeah, great performance there. Uh, do you have a, uh, like a favorite film or um, like a role from any of these actors you mentioned? Will Smith is another one. Like you know, the fact it, that he yeah. can, I just want to mention the fact that he can go from comedy to drama. Like a lot of people might say overrated. A lot of people might say, you know, full of himself. You know, like people have all these things to say about anyone mm -hmm. really but again the fact that he can switch like that um like i remember when the pandemic started i was watching i am legend <laughs> yeah. uh, right uh, appropriately so right i was just like this guy's selling it like there's there's a pandemic that went crazy and this guy's just trying to figure it out but yeah sorry to uh make that point there but uh, with regards to a favorite role you had in mind um with these characters hmm. i think So uh, first of all, I'll start by answering sort of favorite movie, which is funny enough because yeah. it actually doesn't in involve any of these guys. It's it's Forrest Gump. That's one of my favorite movies um, wow. of all time. And I think uh, the reason why I enjoy the movie so much is because, <clears throat> sorry, it, um, it encompasses so much in a, a sociological aspect of, of society. You know, we have this, uh, this this gentleman who lives in the South. He has a low IQ, and he's able to navigate throughout life and sort of experience all of the um, experiences that I guess a quote unquote regular person should feel, right. right? And he's so driven by love, right? That that underlining theme. I'm I'm very uh, I'm very enticed when it comes to a love story. And just you know, talking about love and describing love and feeling love, and how love just drives, right? And you know, touching into him going into the Vietnam War, right, which is another huge um, historical moment, right? And then running into you know the Black Panther Party and sort of how that dynamic was, right? And there's so many there's so many different facets about that film that I enjoyed. It's kind of like watching five different films at the same time. Yeah, now, in terms sure. of like a technical aspect of filmmaking, mm -hmm. it, it's it's I wouldn't say it's one of the best in terms of in terms of a personalized um, yeah. decision. It would be more so for me. Um, <clears throat> and then going into individual performances of somebody that I, uh, one of the actors that I uh, enjoy watching, it's it, it's such a tough decision. Uh, or a particular role really like like i said with like uh for example denzel washington training day there's certain roles that those actors you mentioned really just come to mind and they mm -hmm. explain why you would be or anyone really a fan of 
uh, these artists um, because they they've made these even Daniel right uh, from mm -hmm. Get Out you know that, yeah. that uh, a great um, a great performance. Uh, there's another movie uh, that comes to mind, uh, but I can't remember the full title. Queen. Queen and Slim. Yeah, Queen and Slim. I still have yet to watch it, but I always enjoy those stylistic kind of movies, and it seemed like it was really well done. So I have to yet to check that out. Uh, but a very promising actor, and oh, looking yeah. forward to a lot of his work. Right. He's yeah. He's a really he's a he's a really really good actor. Not to digress, but even just kind of studying him as an actor and him being an English actor and being able to incorporate the American language in different areas of the states. Right. So we go from, you know, we go from a, a standard neutralized American accent, right, and get out. Then we jump to um, Queen and Slim, where he's talking with a little bit more of a southern playing, you know, in Cleveland, you know, sort of their verbiage and, and their cadence and how they speak and the mannerisms, right? Then we go to Black Panther, where he, you know, embodies this, this African language and accent and how he's able to do that. And a lot of people don't realize it's very difficult to do the things that he's doing when it just comes down to the technical aspect of being able to talk in different languages and uh, different accents. Um, it takes a lot of work. It's one of those things you appreciate as an actor as you sort of hear him discuss his process and, um, and just to see it on the screen. For sure. Um, but for me, one of the more powerful moments, uh, I will say it would be Will Smith and the one that really comes to me is uh, seven pounds as mm. crazy as that sounds. Okay. And maybe, maybe it's because of um, the story that was told, the mystery, uh, the pain, the um, commodity, the, you know, the, the idea of, uh, of, of someone sort of going through such traumatic um, experiences and wanting to, do something with the second crack at life. And, you know, right. even if it's sort of giving his life away um, to sort of make up for the lives that he's costed. Um, that, yeah, strange as that sounds, that's the one that just pops. Yeah, for sure. I'm, there's a lot of other phenomenal um, characters and, and films that, that I enjoy. I'm just uh, not thinking about them off the top, but I, I think for me right now, in terms of an artist and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the stories, the stories that I enjoy and I like, it, it has a great sense of allure and mystery and yeah. there being a lot behind a character that is very mysterious. Um, it is very eerie. Um, and it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I'm very just enticed to the psychology of, 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 you know, people it's human emotion, it's human psychology, right? It's, it's well, the best films. Are, yeah. Yeah. The best films I just want to say is are the ones that make you ask the questions, right. Make you think about the human condition, um, maybe even question yourself. Uh, how do you function as a human being in society? Right. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot, right. There's just been a lot of films, like even just a random film, like unhinged uh, it's mm -hmm. on Netflix, you know, just one of those guilty pleasure movies with Russell Crowe, uh, a, a movie that's, you know, obviously not the, not the greatest movie, but done well in the sense that I, I, I watched it from beginning to end without getting bored. And I, I love those movies where you, you go outside, for example, in this situation, and I would look at the road and I would say, oh, is anyone experiencing road rage today or whatever? Like they just, <laughs> you, when you leave the screen, really, you know what I mean? When you leave that experience, um, it sticks with you in a way, right? Now it's gone, right? But mm -hmm. um, depending on the film, uh, some films just like really stick with you, like powerful, like Social Network. I remember watching that. Mm -hmm. and I was just fascinated mm -hmm. with the world of social media and business and just learning about the the... the the shit that went on, you know, the betrayal yeah. and all those aspects. Right. Um, but, and you touched on a lot of great things. Like I, I'm glad you mentioned Forrest Gump, um, 94 represent <laughs> part of the 94 <laughs> year. Pulp Fiction is my thing. That's when uh, Tarantino made his breakthrough, but that's yes. the, that's the one that took best picture. And yeah. um, Forrest Gump, I, I enjoy it because it's um, it talks, it, it highlights uh, the rewards of being a good person. And exactly. it really shows that good, being a good person is the coolest, most honorable, uh, most noble thing you can do. And it just, mm -hmm. and he wins in every, every way, both you know, physically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's not trying right. to win. He's just, he's and just, he's, not he's, he's coming win, yeah. from such an honest place. He's an innocent man. Yeah. He's an innocent man. He has no agenda. He has, um, you know, no intention. His intention is just to go through, go through this life and, you know, he's, he's rewarded. 
um, but it's in, a, in one way or another. Yeah. But I want to, but the reason why I enjoy it more, um, and I'm glad, again, I'm glad you brought it up because thinking about that film, it's crazy time right now. And there's a lot of, you know, don't say this. And he said that, and people also get this weird notion that um, there's no benefit of being a good person. You know, how they always say, you know, it's better to be an yeah. asshole or you, you, uh, the, the girls like assholes, you know, all the, all the, all these <laughs> concepts. And I don't know, but it, it's just such a genuine, again, a genuine film where it shows you that, okay, maybe things happened way too easy for him, but it was the yeah, notion, yeah. the idea behind having a big heart and having good intentions. And that goes into a lot of the things I'll ask you and a lot of things that we go take going forward as creatives is we're not going to get things right. You might not do a of performance course. that people like. I might not make a, I might make a film that's controversial, but if we're making, if we're doing it with the right intentions, our intentions are pure or good, intentions then pure, there's nothing yeah. to feel guilty about, right? Like if you're doing of it course. to really um, highlight something that shouldn't be highlighted, then I understand. But if you're doing it mm-hmm. because you're trying your best to, to tell a, a heart pounding story and you might, you know, step on a few toes, but you're doing it in the best way you can. And you're trying to uplift someone or inspire one in a different way. You have to mm-hmm. just tell yourself that not everyone's going to uh, appeal to that. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not going to appeal to everybody. You know, I think what you have to keep in mind is as long as you're telling a story that is, that comes from uh, a pure place and your intentions are pure, um, you you release it to the world and they're going to take it how they take it. You're not going to get everybody to like your film. You know, that's not how human beings operate. That's not how society operates, Yeah. you know? But if you if you believe in your story, if it comes from an honest place, I think that's what matters the most, you know? Absolutely. And um, it's interesting uh, you coming from acting because I, I've well, I guess I'm still young. You never know what happens, but I have no, I, I don't know where to even start with regards to acting. And I always uh, commend and, and admire that you have the courage to put yourself in front of the camera. Um, I try to pull that off every week with my vlogs and corner talks. <laughs> I, I can't even remember memorize one of the lines that I wrote myself. So uh, definitely, uh, congratulations on that aspect. <laughs> but uh, listen, it, 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 yeah. it wasn't easy when I started. It was not easy. Of having course. to memorize tons of sides and, and, and lines was something that I had to learn to do. I had to pound it every single day. And it, that when you get into acting, you start to, to learn a lot about yourself. Mm-hmm. And they always say the, the best actors are the ones that they know, they know who they are. There, there is no, you know, there is no Achilles heel in, this, in, in their character. They, they understand everything, regardless if it's a weakness or it's a strength, because right. you have to be able to portray an honest character. And the only way that you can do that is it starts from self, mm-hmm. right? So you start to develop all of these, um, these frequencies and you understand a lot about yourself. And one of the things that I had to learn is I couldn't, I couldn't wait for a day before to, to memorize 10 pages of, of a script or of sides. It wasn't, my brain no. doesn't work like that. Of course. You know, yeah. of course, over time and the longer that you do it, you become, yeah. you know, you'll have more of an expertise. Yeah. You have more of an expertise. Yeah. But for me, I always say I have to pound these lines in. And again, the reason why is because it's not even, the, it's not even about the fact of, you know, remembering your lines. But how are you going to have the creative freedom to play around if your lines aren't memorized to a T? Right. You know, if I have to con- consistently remember about, oh, what's my line again? Oh, did I, did I miss my line? Oh, you know, yeah, and you, and you, tr- it's unprofessional and, and it doesn't sit re- well with you because, you know, and, and I experienced it uh, being on set that it, like you were explaining earlier about moving parts and there's just so much involved and you're just one piece to the huge puzzle. And if one piece isn't working, it can slow down um, on already a uh, very stressful shoot. Um, exactly. cause these shoots, you know, they run like 16 hours, you know, and you, the last thing you want to do is, is to show up and not be prepared. And, and I like that idea where you're kind of real with yourself and you got to be aware in the industry as you well. To. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta say to yourself, you know, am I going to go in there and say, no, I don't need to know my lines. Like I'll just ad lib it. No. Or are you going to say, no, I need some time. I'm probably going to take me a month maybe, or yeah. I don't know, a few weeks. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a very interesting point. And, um, yeah. Would you say, is it safe to say that, because memorizing is a very harsh word, I find, especially when talking mm-hmm. to actors, would you say you feel the, the lines, like you would have to feel the character? Um, is that how you get the mm-hmm. lines, the lines um, on point, like on cue? 
So in terms of my process and how I go through uh, memorizing, if, right. you know, to use this word, I have to, I have to read through the story. I have to understand it. And then what I also have to make sure I'm doing is I'm not judging the character regardless of, you know, who they may be. I have to right. come from an honest place. Right. And then in terms of understanding what's happening, um, it's a story that's being told. So right. it's not it's not that difficult to to learn once you begin to understand that, and you know over 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 time you sort of get that creative freedom where it's just like, okay, here are these lines. I am delivering these lines, but I'm not just delivering these lines for the sake of delivering them. There has to be meaning behind everything. Every line that's on that page is there for a reason. Yeah. They're not they're not wasting any space on a script, and you know yeah. this. Right? Yeah. So. Course. To, to memorize these lines and and be able to connect to the emotional state of, of, of that person and being able to portray that in the camera. That's the most important thing because one thing that I was told is you can't fake the funk, right? Yeah. And the camera never lies. That is the biggest truth teller. No matter so how you're feeling or what you're experiencing or going yeah. through, the camera yeah. is going to catch everything. Yeah. So if, if it's not coming from a real place, you're not going to show it. You're not. You're not going to be able to to bring it out. And if you are, I'm sure you're you're extremely exhausted by the end of the day, just trying to, um, you know, trying to bring something that isn't there. Um, but it's sort of connecting, connecting to the lines and how the character would feel. Sort of pulling from your emotion and the experiences that you felt and experiences that you felt from others, and through conversations and just you know being a human being and 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 conversating and or sorry, conversing and just sort yes. of, you know, um, just being a sponge. You have to be a sponge. As an actor, you are, you're, you're studying the, the human psychology and you're breaking down the character to their purest form, right? Observer. But I always say you got to be an observer. observer. You have to be people, a phenomenal observer. Yeah, <laughs> people, people have always, uh, when, when I was growing up, people would always say like, oh, wow, you're very observant. I never really took to that, like what that, what that meant. And now I start to see in the business, especially that it, it pays a lot if you're, you're an observer because writing, directing, even like you just said, acting, right? If you want the best mm -hmm. performance, the most accurate portrayal, you want to be observing everything. And everything. That, that, that actually leads me to my, uh, my next point here is what, what would you, would you describe yourself as a method actor? In a sense, yeah. in a sense, I, I don't, I don't go to, I don't spill too much over, mm -hmm. um, I like to use it um, in order to get me into the emotional state that I need to get into. So I'll right. give you a quick example. Sure. Um, I did a short film uh, two months ago. This character is very dark. And, you know, here's one of the challenges of, of being an actor is, again, having to come from a place of no judgment, mm -hmm. right? And being able to relate to the character, understanding right. what the character is about. So I was like, okay, what has this, what has this, this, this character gone through in their life? Have they felt isolation from something? Have they felt pain? Have they, you know, you, you sort of ask yourself all these questions. So for me, I start to just try and get into kind of that mindset of, you know, what it feels like to, to sort of feel just this darkness and, you know, to feel this pessimistic nature and this dystopia. Right. And I do it, I, you know, I do it to a sense, I don't overdo it because they say some of these characters spill out into your your real your your real self, and um, I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen where I've got so so intense. The lines in are blurred. Of, <laughs> the lines right. are blurred, uh, yeah. and I've been called out on it. You know, uh, hey hey Shave, it's hey you there? Are you okay? You good? Right right right. You know, and and for me, I was like that was a moment where I was like, okay, I have to be able to sort of relax a little bit. And again, it, it, it's a part of it's a part of figuring out who you are as an actor and your craft and kind of understanding what works best for you. Right. But I like I like to do it. I like to do it, but I don't like to overdo it. Right. Um, Take it home with you kind of thing. You want to just show it, up, do the exactly. perform. Yeah. Exactly. You prepare. You want to prepare, prepare, prepare and overly prepare until you get to that moment. Right. You do what you have to do. And then when you're done, that's it. And there was an interesting, yeah, there was an interesting point I was, uh, uh, or an interesting video I was watching on YouTube, like those film reviewers, and they were diving into the whole idea of method acting. And they were trying to say like, when it goes too far, um, and when it's acceptable, right? So you have, again, bringing up Heath Ledger, uh, he was a method actor in the sense 
he did what he needed to do uh, for the Joker in this uh, regarding like locking himself in a hotel room, um, you know, writing down a, on a notepad, like all his thoughts uh, from the perspective of the Joker, um, trying to perfect his laugh, uh, you know, really dive into this character. And he did like six to eight months, I believe, isolated from everyone. Right. And mm-hmm. then you have someone like Jared Leto, right. That took it too far you know, sending uh, dead rats or used condoms and like, right. And he was arguing the film reviewer um, that doesn't, that doesn't serve you in any way or the character that just disturbs a lot of people. Right. And uh, another a friend of mine once said, if you're really talented, if you're really a classy, like, you, you know what you're doing, you're professional, you don't even need to go that far. You just, it's a switch on and off, you on know, off. Um, Daniel day Lewis, um, I guess he could be an exception, but they defended him in that video because they were saying his performances were so um, detached from reality. Like for example, playing Abraham Lincoln, uh, no mm-hmm. one knows what so, it was like to live 200 years ago. Exactly. And he also needed yeah. to perfect that accent, right? Cause he's naturally British and you needed an American naturally accent, British. right? So it's yeah. normal. That would make sense to me. Like while you're walking around speaking the way you are, you know, maybe wearing the outfit. Cause you want to feel like you're in that era. You don't want to mm-hmm. go home and cause that's what he was saying. You don't want to go home and use a cell phone. Or start watching TV, right? Because it takes yeah, you out. It takes you out of that. It takes you out of your element. Yeah. The element, yeah. And, and there's even an interesting... when he played, Go ahead, he played Billy. I think it was Billy the Butcher in Gangs of New York. If I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Even one of my favorite like roles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of my another great film, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of his performance, Leo's performance, right? Of course. Um, you, it's kind of hard to take all of that home. You're going to take some of it home, right? Where they're yeah. in sort of in a time era where there were no cell phones. Right. Yeah. And society operated differently. But I always say if you're not harming uh, yourself or anybody, you're, you're Yeah. Don't yeah. don't don't get carried away with it and don't ever cross that line because as, as seen on set, they're everyone's trying to do their job and it's stressful as it is. And if everyone can just work smoothly, um because the camera doesn't lie, I, I like that you said that the it'll pick up the actor and it'll pick up the tension in on the set. Mm-hmm they'll know like you know when you watch those movies and people are like oh i'm in on the joke or these guys are having fun yeah. like watch yeah. watch the first iron man right you just know like everyone's having a good time you know they're shooting the shit um because you feel it you know everyone's in on the joke right yeah so yeah um I'm, I'm glad you mentioned all those points it's great points and again as an actor or me being a creative i've seen that you're you know very active on social media and i commend that because that's very important mm-hmm. um what kind of challenges did you go through, uh, through, you know, posting yourself, your monologues on Instagram, or I see you now are on TikTok. Uh, yeah. <laughs> great, great, great work, man. Keep at it, man. It's very important to be on TikTok as well. Uh, get that organic reach. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah. What, what kind of challenges uh, did you go through? Uh, if, if, if any. No, there's, uh, I think the challenge for all of us just going down to, I think we we are perfectionists in a sense, and it's so crazy because we live in such an imperfect world, yeah. right? So the challenge for me was, okay, Shiva, you want to be a perfectionist, but it's 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 dangerous because you are imperfect and you are perfectly imperfect. There's nothing wrong with you being imperfect, right? But again, you know, you're a human being, so the fear of feeling judged, am I good enough? You know, did I? Did I do this uh, uh, a disservice? Um, are people going to say I suck? You know, kind of like all those questions. But then right. I just said, you know what? Even if I do suck or I did a dis- disservice, um, it starts with self. If I felt like I did a good job, I'm okay with that. And also, too, I'm 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 a human being. I'm forever growing, and I yeah. will continue to grow as a person and as an actor. You know, I would rather you see me start terrible. And I want you to watch the growth happen. Exactly. I think people can really appreciate that as well, too. So the moment I, I, I thought about that, I said, you know what? There is nothing to lose. There is, there's only something to gain. And again, it's really? such a vulnerable, it's such a vulnerable uh, feeling to have to be vulnerable in front, of, in front of the world. But that's my responsibility as an actor, as a performer, as an artist, to be vulnerable. I work in an industry where you need to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So use your different practices, you know, uh, let people sure. see what you're sort of capable of, what you enjoy, what you like, your creative freedom and your muscle and your experiences. 
you know, so why not use these, these, these ventures to do that? I like to use social media just to, I guess, showcase uh, a little bit about what I'm about and, um, and to take feedback and to, you know, just to continue to say, hey, um, continue to uh, watch this this journey. And uh, there's some actors yeah, that- be I've, inspired by it, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. If, and it, and even if it's, it. sorry, just not to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, you, but for sure. If it's, if it's some, I think, so the number one, there's there's a few things that continue to inspire me to, to be an actor, to work on my craft, be better. Right. One of the things is being able to inspire others, mm-hmm. regardless if you're an actor, you're an artist, you're, you're, you're a director, producer, if you work a nine to five, whatever it is, if you feel inspired by my performance in some capacity, I've done my job. There you go. I've yeah. done my job. Yeah. I want to inspire you to be the best version of yourself. If you, exactly. watch, if you watch one of my performances and you were inspired by that, then great, phenomenal. I've done my job. I can... Yeah. I, can, I feel content with that. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point. And um, I think it's so important to embrace that vulnerability, to embrace that failure and to embrace that loss. I know myself, I've struggled uh, f- for a long time growing up because no one wants to fail. No one, no one likes to be uh, humiliated or feel embarrassed that they did something. But the reality is, I, I, again, I'm still young, but in some respects, I'm also getting older. It's gotten to a Mm -hmm. point for me where it's like, what am I like? I'm wasting so much time uh, debating, right? And you probably feel this too, where it's like, who gives a shit? Comes to a point (laughs) when it's like, enough now. Like, I got no choice. I got no choice now. Now it's more like, because again, with these vlogs that I'm starting to do, I don't know if you see them on my Instagram. They they were big for me to do because, again, it it's not you know the best work, but it's for me. It's if when I'm getting messages. Uh, saying, you know, thank you for breaking down this book a certain way. I, I really, uh, I never really understood it from that angle or thank you for uplifting my day. It was really motivating. I got to stop comparing myself to others. That's a win, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm glad what you said where you you post your work and you want to show people the growth because people forget, people see all the ones that are famous, all the ones that are killing it. You know, Joe Rogan with the pod, pod, right? podcast, search up Joe Rogan, number one, with his first podcast. He was doing that, it with oh, headphones, right? Video you're speaking was like music, music to my ears. Right. That's a, that I think, and again, it, you know, it kind of goes down to how society kind of structures us and how we see of course. the world. We, you know, we're so conditioned to see people at their top, at their best, but you start somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. A yeah. lot of those, a lot of those people that you may look up to, or you see as this perfect celebrity or whatever they is, they weren't always like that. They started... Yeah somewhere and they grew so it's okay to start somewhere and grow if you're not the best at what you do that is okay as long as you are honest as long as you you know you work hard you're passionate those things are what matters to me and that's that's sort of like what i what i sort of figured out i'm like and yeah i may not be the best i may not be the best when i start but i know that i'm i work hard and i'm passionate and i will continue to grow and get better i'm okay with, with with that you know and the only way to but the only way to really get there is you know, to do the steps that you, you need to take right now, right? In order to be the best, um, people don't realize that you have to go through the dirt. You have to go through the pain. Um, even like, for example, I was connecting it back. One of my recent videos that I'm going to post is about writing because people always say, how do you write? Or they're curious or they're scared to look at the blank page. And I don't know if you took upon that task, but it's not something I would encourage for anyone. But if you do want to tell a story, you need, you need to have that courage, but you also need to tell yourself it's not going to be good. And if you want to tell that big, great story one day, you have to accomplish that first story. You have to finish the story. I said it in one of my points is finish the story. I know it sounds finish simple, but finish the story. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's harder than it sounds, but uh, you know, it's not going to be easy, but you can do it and you got to finish it because you got to give yourself that confidence that you can finish a story and you can move on to the next one. It doesn't have to be published, but you have to, you have to finish it. And that's with really anything, I think. I think that's with really anything. Like finish, there's so many people you and I probably know in the, in the industry or friends alike where, you know, they'll say, oh, I started something and I didn't finish it. And again, we're not perfect. I've, I've been in those situations too, but you have to have at least the attitude to say, I showed up, I did the best I could. Let's move on to the next project. But if you're always going, mm-hmm. I can't even start or I don't even want to finish it. That's the hardest part, buddy, is showing up and, and completing the job. So- 
yeah, it, it's it's very important. Um, do you have a, a as an actor like a certain platform you prefer or you're enjoying more in terms of getting out your content? For me, it, it's primarily Instagram, mm -hmm. and now I'm sort of venturing off into this this you know TikTok. And eventually what I'll begin to do is I'll start to use YouTube um, right. in a sense, right? So whether it's just quick uh, impromptu moments or if it's like shorts or whatever the case may be, sort of utilizing that platform as well too for longer form content, of course, right? Um, so just, you know, kind of using every every avenue to to express uh, creativity and and to be an artist. So in terms of one that's, that's sort of the, the, the flagship, it's, it's Instagram and then it sort of branches off into uh, to other social media uh, platforms. Yeah. yeah, one thing, one thing I've, I wanna mention though is regards to social media, do you find, I asked this question uh, with a lot of colleagues and again, creatives, do you find it's the oversaturation, like everyone's on it, detrimental? as an actor or is it actually benefiting you or kind of indifferent about it i so the, here comes the sort of business aspect of understanding how algorithm algorithms and things mm -hmm. work of course what i've begun to realize is not everybody's going to see what you do first like yeah. the way that algorithm algorithms work is it takes like for you to post and do things on the average of seven times for people to kind of see it to sort of pay attention. Sometimes to I'm it. liking your videos like two days later. <laughs> and Trevay's like, hey, this guy didn't like my video. <laughs> and, that, and I've begun to understand that. Yeah, right. Where you see a post from two days ago, you're like, wait, what happened? Uh, I, why didn't I see this two days ago? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I get it. I understand, you know, there's so many different intricacies of, of who you're going to reach and how you're going to reach them. And just understand that you're not going to reach everybody immediately. And that's okay. And why not give yourself the opportunity to sort of showcase what you're about you know showcase mm -hmm. because again a lot of these a lot of these casting directors these directors these producers yeah they're we're not we're now in a time where they're on social media as well too yeah they're, they're going through they're going through even if they're not even searching if you fall onto their yeah. you know their radar that could that could help you in, in some way or another you know so it's kind of just being um and we're always browsing, um, by the way, like even us, always, right? Like think of it from always. our perspective, right? If anyone yeah. is a creative listening to this and they say, yeah, but I don't even go on social media. You do. Uh, I, I mean, you, you don't want, you don't feel comfortable posting on social media. You're still browsing. You're still always looking for creative content. If you're a true creative at heart, you're always curious, like what else someone's doing. And I'll come across your content. I'll come across another actor's content. And I'm always imagining like, oh, with this role or a story. So it doesn't matter really what level um, casting director or someone, you know, a sp starting off or aspiring to, to be at that level. Um, like you were saying, it, 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 you never know who it's going to hit or who it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, inspire to make that, you, you, that uh, take that message. Right. You, you understand that sometimes you're planting seeds without even knowing it. Yeah. These things you may not, I'm glad you said that, man. Yeah. you may not immediately see it, but in some way it'll it'll circle back around in some way it always happens there's yeah. been too many instances where it has happened for you to not believe it <laughs> no it's true. You, it's true it's yeah. true yeah i was yeah, proving that i was uh because again i i learned a lot and i grew a lot in the sense of how i've seen how i view social media again you if you consume more than you're producing um it can make you feel depressed mm -hmm. But if you're producing more than you're consuming, um, you you take the field, you own that uh, that platform. And I've been in those situations, like you just said, is just because you post something and you don't get a message back tomorrow, doesn't mean it's the seeds aren't planted. I would be getting messages from six months later from someone <laughs> that saw something. Yeah, and 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 I said to myself, you see, you got to always because let's be honest, we'll probably have that as creatives. We're always discouraging ourselves. Yeah. And we're saying to ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, we'll have those times when we'll be like, ah, should I post it? Like, maybe no one's watching it or, you know, what am I doing, right? <laughs> and again, six months, a year later, someone will say, hey, I really saw those uh, vlogs. Like, they inspired me to do this. Uh, did you want to work on this project together? And that actually did happen. It was a true story. And, and j again, just that small little win told me I, I got to keep putting stuff out. Mm -hmm. And it's not always to get that feedback. It just, it's a bonus. And to know that you're, again, 
making someone's life better or again, connecting with creatives, connecting with people back what you were saying when we first started this conversation, the opportunity when we worked at Sunglass Hut, the opportunity to connect with people that are like-minded, you know, that share the same values and share the same ambition uh, towards this career. Um, It's not easy to find, you know, Uh, a lot of people, um, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but there's a lot of people that are in the industry and they're, they're trying to find their ways, but there's an exceptional amount where very few that are really ambitious, you know what I mean? Like really like gun ho on what they're doing. And that's why I commend you on the social media is you should be doing that as an actor and you should be constantly putting stuff out there and getting that exposure. Um, which leads me to my next point, uh, seeing you, uh, this, this, uh, company called maneuver men's grooming. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to know, like, how did you get involved with that? So maneuver men's grooming is owned by, um, Andre Russell, who's a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends. Nice. And so what we begun to notice is that in within our within our community, within our circle of friends, I, I say all my friends are, are are the goats, are the best at what they do, because I want to make sure I'm empowering everybody that's around me. So just just jumping right back. What so for Dre as a company and maneuver as a company, right? We understand that there are ads, there are commercials, there is promotional content that needs to be done, right? So he had realized, hey, Shavay's in, uh, you know, this this industry and, you know, maybe we can do something here with this. So he's like, hey, like, would you be down to just kind of like direct uh, something? And for me, I was like, yeah, I mean, it won't hurt. If we fail, we fail, we'll just keep going. Yeah. And from there, that's when like, a lot of things started opening up for me in terms of nice. how I've seen um, the idea of, of, of sort of directing, producing, even writing a little bit mm-hmm. in terms of sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, media content and things of that nature and being able to to be creative and sort of stretch another muscle um, that is that is there and that can be utilized for a lot of people. And we begun to just collaborate and, you know, storm ideas and just sort of execute. And we've run into a lot of, uh, a lot of moments, a lot of adversity, especially during COVID. And I, you know, I said to him, and I also said to myself, I was like, you know what, if we're able to do this during this moment of time, we have no excuse when things go back to regular. It's true. You know, we've been through, we've been through the mud. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. we've been through it and we just continue to just sort of, you know, create. And even from there, it's sort of branched off and just now into um, so many, so many opportunities and so many things that are starting to form That's great. Um, and, and just going into just being um, seen, being seen, you know, mm-hmm. uh, people will eventually start to see what you're about. And now I'm like getting messages of people like, oh, like, I really appreciate your work and, you know, what you've done, the talented, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it, you know, it's, it's not safe to say that you want to sort of rely on what everybody's saying, because of again, it goes back to self and, and sort of, you know, how you view yourself. Yes. Of course. But it feels good to start to see some sort of, um, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, people are starting to notice. People are starting to notice. And I told, my, I told one of my best friends, I was like, people are starting to notice. So now is the opportunity to showcase what you're about. Capitalize, yeah. Capitalize on what you're about. Mm-hmm. People are noticing. It takes a while for that to happen, but that's okay. In the meantime, you're working on getting... Yeah. It's been, it's been a great experience. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe I wouldn't have been able to learn all that I've known now um, unless it was for, you know, maneuver and, you know, continuing to just grow as an artist and understand that, hey, maybe I can direct stuff. Maybe I can produce stuff. Maybe I can write stuff. Um, okay, here's the business aspect of things. How do I see, you know, uh, creating media content? Okay, now we go over to filmmaking. How do I visualize this and understand the business of filmmaking, being an artist and capitalizing on that as well, too? Right. So it unlocks a lot of doors. That's what it did. It unlocks course, yeah. a lot of doors for me. And, um, you know, we, you know, sometimes we get stuck in this whole, this whole thing about being an artist, you know, it's the like Denzel and Will effect. Don't be seen. Don't be seen. Do you want to leave a level of mystery? Will Smith, you know, he made the jump now because he realized how important social media and being sort of out there. People want to know who you are, right? And what you're about. 
But before that, later uh, um, in the early 2000s, and even leading up to maybe three years ago, it was he wanted to keep a level of mystery and and uh, that's all about you know kind of like what uh, you know superstars a listers are about. You don't really know much about them. You only see them on the big screen. But people want to see. Um, they want to know about you. They want to know what you're about. They want to. People may just like you because of the things that you believe in and who you are as a person. Even separating who you are as an artist, you know. So, um, yeah, not to not to go off on a tangent, but yeah, that's no, just sort sure, of yeah. that's just how I I start to see things. Um, just it's again, a very good. Sort of, yeah, no, I just yeah. sorry, I just wanted to say though, it's a very good point what you're saying um, regarding that concept of people want to know who you are and where you're com coming from, and that transparency is very very critical. And that again, that's why. I started uh, doing, getting more on YouTube and posting more and even yourself is I want people to know who I am. Uh, that's why they have these podcasts. Um, mm -hmm. Not only do I want people to know who I am, I want to know who I'm interact. I want them to know who I'm interacting with, who I associate with, who I'm inspired by, right? Hang out with people that are like you or better than you, as they always say, or at least my mother would always tell me. And I, I want people to hear that. I want people to, to kind of be, because if I get to that point, where I am very influential or my films are, you know, hitting a broader, uh, a wider audience, mm -hmm. they can come back to this and they'll look back and say, Oh, this is Daniel. Like, you know, in his room, like talking about movies with his boy Chavez, <laughs> you know what I mean? And but back to you, same thing. Oh, let's go back to that conversation. And if we both end up on the same, you know, on the same trajectory like the same path that'd be amazing like we have these amazing i plan to have more re recurring conversations but mm -hmm. to document our path you know to document our journey and document it all goes back all. to it and it exactly and it transcends and it transcends you know your work right it, it people become more interested in who you are and you become the brand that's probably why i'm very in interested in tarantino even though he's not doing vlogs and things like that if you go on youtube he's always at the q a's he's always doing round always. tables and that was a, a, a an opening to his world. So when I watch mm -hmm. his movies, it's a completely different experience exactly. because I start to see, oh my God, and Django and Chain, this is why he used that piece of music because he was exactly. talking about it at that round table. He loved rap and you know what I mean? So it's uh, it's very important to have that transparency. And I know, I know you, 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 again, that's why it comes across when you're doing your work as well. Um, and, and we people, have more work. People... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, people people want to see your journey. They they yeah. they love to see it. Like I want to. I wish I could see the journey of more um, artists and you know actors Same. and and uh, of, I want to see you know how they started. And that's kind of like you know, there's 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 some outlets where they use like the um, the after um, in conversation with. I love watching those because they like a lot of these actors, these notable actors, they talk about their experience just getting into film and, and sort of the growth and the development of their journey. Yeah. And I love to see that because that connects the reality of things yes. for, for people yeah. that inspires you. Hey, this person started, he, 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 okay, let's use an example. This person moved to LA. He wasn't booking anything and he continued to work and he, you know, uh, lightning stroke or, you know, he worked to get to where yeah. he's at. Sure. And again, you, 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 you personalize and you can identify with that. And that is inspiring for people um, when, you know, people can see your growth and your journey and, and know that, again, these people are, are, are regular people. They're extremely good at what they do. You know, that is for certain. But uh, often at times people feel as if they're not even human beings, right? Yeah. But they're humans and they've gone through a lot of the experiences that we may be in right now, right? And people want to see that journey and they want to see that growth. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and that's why I was trying to um, allude to that, where we were talking about social media. I, I was getting to the point of the downside of Instagram. There's um, like a superficiality to it where you don't really know at least what, what the person intends for the viewer to see. Um, you don't really know what's going on in their world. Not that you should, it's not anyone's business, but there's this uh, illusion where everyone's happy and everyone's having a good time and all they do is travel. Um, and my whole big, my biggest thing, and, and I'm sure you can agree here is uh, I don't want my social media to be like that. I want it to be, yeah, there's high moments, but there's also moments where they don't have to be low, but it could be moments of 
uh, yeah, I struggled with, um, you know, anxiety or I struggled, this is how to deal with it. Or I struggled mm -hmm. with uh, writer's block. This is how I overcame that. Because again, it's always about long-term. If, if Looking back, when you see my growth and my journey, if you ever have questions or if you ever want to learn more about who I am as a person, it won't be just constant posts of me in front of a Lamborghini or, you know, taking shots um, of music videos and things like that. It'll be a mix of, oh, that, that was, I remember him talking to Chevet about, you know, mental health, or I remember him talking about yeah. how important it is to be transparent on social media. It's all about becoming relatable. And I feel like, there are those that are taking advantage of that by exposing, you know, the vulnerable side, but there are also those that are lacking that. Um, and again, who am I to judge? But I feel if we were all be all treat um, Instagram or social media, the way it was intended to be our, be our uh, authentic selves. Um, you'd be surprised. You can inspire people and you can find your own audience. Um, because I believe any piece of content that you post, it's not bad. There's someone that's going to watch it. There's someone that's going to be inspired by it. You don't need 10,000 likes, even one like can make your day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've, I've experienced a lot of uh, changes that way. And it's very important what you said. You never know who's watching. And this is the, I'm a big proponent of this whole idea where COVID, a lot of people I know are struggling financially. My prayers go out with you. A lot of people have lost loved ones probably. However, for creatives, this is like the best time. I've been saying it since day one to collect your thoughts, catch up, sit down, and figure out what do you want to do? Because it's a huge reminder that life's precious. It can be taken at any time. Um, we don't know if there's going to be another um, devastating event like this. So see what you can do. But again, from a creative perspective, especially because, you know, before how it was, even at Sunglass when we were working, it was very tough, you know, got to work. Sorry. By the time you get home, you're like exhausted. Mm -hmm. but now it's like you have that break, you know, use, use the lockdown to your advantage you know, um, connect with people, connect with people that are in the industry or, or just even to catch up. You never know where that conversation will lead to come up with a pod, create a podcast. This is why I'm doing it because I love not only mm -hmm. to connect with you guys, but I want to catch up. You know, I want to, I want to see what you, what you guys are up to and what people in the industry are, how, how they're functioning. Cause I learn a lot from people and I think it's very important, uh, to always be learning and always be, stay motivated, stay creative. <laughs> That's my motto. But uh, I think we had a really great conversation. Um, always enjoy catching up with you, man. And um, I'm really uh, happy to see what you're doing, what you're putting out on TikTok and on Instagram. I think there's a lot of uh, great content, got great content to come. I see that there's a short film. Uh, you, you got into several festivals that you acted in? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, equal nice. by her name. Yeah, she, nice. um, uh, she, she called me up to to play a part and uh, that's great I, I'm just i feel gratitude for just being a part of it yeah of course yeah so yeah uh check that film out whenever it's released is it on youtube or can people watch not it yet, yet? Not, not yet, yet. okay soon. soon so keep an eye out follow Chave lorenzo and he'll be posting uh that video uh keep you guys updated and uh, yeah so i plan to have more of these uh conversations with you and um again kind of pinpoint and just go over our journey, really uh, document it and uh, inspire as many creatives as we can. All right, man. All right. You have anything to say to the audience before we leave? I'd say continue to inspire, continue to work hard, continue to be passionate. Um, you, there are people watching even when you don't think they are. And if you can change one life, that's, that, that should be what it's about. And just, inspire each other the same way uh, Daniel and I inspire each other uh, just exactly. continue to do that and, and watch the growth and watch the journey so. yeah exactly yeah. all right everybody thank you again for joining thanks again Chave and we'll talk soon take care everyone